I'd just like to um, start by um, welcoming all of our uh, guests today, our attendees, and uh, just to begin by telling you a little bit about Design Insider. So Design Insider is an online digital magazine which brings you the latest news and trends from the contract furnishing sector. And we're actually connected with the BCFA, the British Contract Furnishings Association, who facilitate opportunities for our members, including providing knowledge, knowledge skills development and inspiration. So today we're going to have a 30 minute webinar with Steve Haskins from So Design. And as many um, of you already know, um, Steve has actually been involved in the design industry for over 30 years as a creative director in some of the largest agencies, but also within the creative university scene. Steve set up So Design in 2000 with a desire to create a different design hub, which would steer intelligent creativity and make a difference to businesses and organizations. So is a team of creators, builders of brands, storytellers and problem solvers. So we know we're gonna get some fantastic answers to our questions all about branding today. And I'm sure that every person there listening um, works for or has their own brand that they're really interested in making the most of. So I'll start by welcoming Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi. Welcome to our webinar. How are you today? Very good. I'm wrapped for winter here because I'm all alone in a cold studio, but uh, hope you can hear me okay. Absolutely. Well, it's cold here on the South Coast today too, so exactly the same. So perhaps we could start our conversation about branding by you telling us really, um, how does a brand reflect values? I think uh, a brand it's more than a mark on a page. It's, it's more than a set of colors. It's more than a typeface. Um, a brand can be a sound, a smell. Um, every brand has a touch point, And that touch point is, you know, an interaction with an audience. Um, it needs to look, feel and behave like itself. Um, a company's values are the very DNA of an organization. Um, it reflects the personality of the company the way the company acts, behaves, and the way that company and brand is perceived by its audience. Brand values are effective. Um, if they are to be effective, um, and the, there is a belief throughout the organization um, for those values, um, the way the company communicates those values is really the heart of the organization. And Audiences respond emotionally to brands. So those values are really, really important. So one of the things you touched on there, Steve, was about communication. Yes. So why is communication particularly key to a brand's success? The way a company communicates to an audience should reflect its values in every way and the very principles the company has been set up on. People place a lot of trust and belief in brands. Uh, the service and products they offer. So it's really important these values are reflected throughout the company's workforce. An effective brand culture where people believe in the company's vision uh, reflects outwardly to its audience. Um, it, it's a really crowded market space out there. Mm. So it's important that brands find different, creative, fresh and engaging ways to communicate with their audiences in order for them to stand out. And especially in the current climate, which is really difficult. So has, have those means of communication really changed over the past seven or eight weeks? It definitely. Uh, I mean, we're all in uncharted territory and actually there is an element of panic in how brands communicate with an audience and how brands are tackling different audience behavior. Uh, we've never been in a position like this before where businesses in travel have literally been shut down overnight. Uh, entire workforces are on furlough. And working from home is sort of becoming the new norm. Um, and there's a lot of 
our natural communication channels that have literally been shut down. Typical value demonstration channels such as customer meetings, trade shows, industry gatherings and have all been shut down. So this requires new engaging ways to demonstrate value comms. You know, and while some experts say brands should not be shouted from the rooftops at the moment, um, some brands shouldn't go dark. Really now is a meaningful time where a meaningful relationships can be built and maintained even during a crisis. Uh, what this period has done to emphasize the importance of communicating your brand even more effectively, uh, we should be seizing new opportunities and being more creative in how we communicate. So I think this period, the longer it goes on, is crucial for every organization. It will define your business and equally your leadership success. So have there been some new um, methods of communication that have really come to the forefront over these recent weeks? I think obviously um, people are using social media a lot more. Um, people are finding more inventive ways to communicate. I think we're all um, exposed to the fact that we're sending emails. Um, it's very quiet out there. Um, there may not be a lot of response back. So uh, there is a genuine um, desire to find new ways of getting in touch with our audience. During this, this period of time, and, and not, not only the, the past um, eight weeks, but also um, looking forward to the, the pending changes in, our, in everyone's current circumstances, what is the real value of, of this time that we've got? I think this period of time has given us all time to reflect. Uh, we're all questioning our lifestyles, the way we work, pace of life and a genuine respect for humanity and the planet and things we take granted in life. Um, these questions are equally relevant for our companies and our brands and their values. Um, I think we should be spending this time to reevaluate our company visions, our ideals, look at how we're communicating our brands to our audience and equally how we can energize our brands offering to be more relevant and robust in order to succeed and adapt in what are going to be very difficult times ahead. Is it, is it quite important to be portraying quite a positive message during this time? Definitely. Uh, it's, it's really important how brands respond to the pressures of the current climate. I think we're all seeking comfort at the moment. Uh, we all need to keep customers informed, engaged, and supported in this crisis um, and reflect the practical and emotional needs of our audience. Brands can have a possible impact by looking to amplify brand values uh, and guide actions across your organization. Um, we should be looking at building messaging frameworks to effectively communicate your actions to audiences and signal this intent through short-term standout where your brand identity and your brand experience can restore trust and reinvigorate sales and protect your market. It's, um, it's a very sensitive market out there at the moment and we all need a big cuddle. It's interesting you say about brand identity because we have, have actually had a question pop in who from Christopher who's just asked if you could give a little bit of clarification of is a brand the same as a corporate identity? Uh, that's an interesting question. I, I would say, can I say yes and no? Yeah. Um, I, I think a corporate identity is seen to be uh, a lot as a logo or a mark on a page and all the guidelines, everything that goes with that. Um, we create brands whereby um, that mark on the page and everything that goes with it um, sums up the personality of the company and portrays the personality of that company uh, through its brand. So the mark on a page, the corporate identity is a small part of 
a company's brand. Fantastic. I'm sure that'll I help. That the question or not, really. Absolutely. Um, so are there, you know, I, I love the fact that uh, to, to portray this positive message that these brands are there, you know, giving a hug to their, their, their audience that really need it. And are there any examples of brands who are being really particularly successful at this at the moment? I think brands uh, obviously speak to us in different ways. Um, there's obviously people like Nike. Um, they put out a campaign um, just when the virus started to take over. Um, and it is a simple tagline, typical Nike. Um, if ever you've dreamed of playing for millions around the world, now is your chance. Play inside, play for the world. People, you know, believe and trust in Nike. And I think, you know, there's a very um, comforting message there. Uh, we've got people like Ikea who are um, demonstrating that you can link your comms to the crisis and still retain the fun in the brand. They did a flapjack set of instructions, how people can make it fam their famous meatballs. Um, lots of films with Ikea uh, talk about making home count and all the comforts you get from staying at home, uh, the joys including pets, cooking, playtime with children. So no hard sell of product as such. Mm -hmm. We're tapping into the emotions of people here. Um, Innocent smoothies, they continue to inspire and engage through um, engaging copies through their social media campaigns. Helpful hints during lockdown. Um, again, no mention of product. This is all building trust in these brands. Um, banks, again, a bit of a bad name at the moment. You know, every company is, is considering um, taking loans and so forth. Um, Monzo Bank seems to be the one bank that, I don't know, you could trust. Um, and there's nothing worse than when you hear brands, especially banks, um, putting out ads, and you know from personal experience that actually you wouldn't trust it with a barge pole. So Monzo haven't used them, but they seem to be doing a good um, take. Fantastic. And Pret, um, I think five years from now, we won't remember a beauty brand has about flogging their lipstick, but we will remember things like Pret giving free drinks and half-price food for NHS workers. Mm -hmm. So it's things like that we will remember in this crisis, brands doing good and not, um, not hard selling, basically. So it seems to me that part of that is an element of generosity from the brand. Yes, definitely. And, you know, more than ever now, we're looking for brands, we're looking to brands um, um, for trust, reassurance, comfort, all those things that brands can give us and things that we appreciate. Within that, um, how, how important is the tone of voice that the brand is using? Holly, tone of voice um, is the very language a brand speaks. Um, it's the personality behind the brand. Uh, tone of voice is unique to every brand. Nike will speak to us differently to Sainsbury's. Virgin British Airways um, will be spoken differently from Glastonbury than we will the All England Tennis Club. So you get a gist of language and how important tone of voice is to a brand. Um, it's important, especially in these times when people's emotions are being stretched and the pressures come in their people's are under. Um, your company values need to sing out in a crisis. Uh, there needs to be clarity in your messaging, how you can help and reassure your customers. Um, and also how you are adapting to change um, and the positive effect this will have on the service you deliver to your customers. So the tone, the voice, um, is a really sensitive issue, especially at the moment. 
So do you think some brands will have actually evolved their tone of voice to be a more appropriate for during this time? Definitely, definitely. Um, and I think, you know, there are certain do's and don'ts you should do regarding tone of voice. Um, your messaging has to be sensitive at the moment, um, has to be sensitive to customers' needs. Now is not the time to hard sell. Um, building trust and belief in a brand will evaluate in sort of customer you know, sales. Um, there are examples of brands they've had to backtrack on their columns because they were seen to be taking advantage of the crisis. Um, you have to adjust. I think in this time, people are looking for reassurance in brands. People are seeking comfort, trust. Um, it's not about me, me, me. It's, it's what brands can do for you. Um, and you need to show a greater level of understanding and now you can offer practical solutions to a really emotional audience and challenging market. So it seems to me that one of those um, don'ts really is, is the, the um, talking about COVID-19 too much within your, within your um, comms. I'm not sure if we're getting bored of COVID yet. I think two weeks in or even shorter, um, I think we're all bombarded with um, emails saying the familiar messages that we are here for you. Um, and it, it, in the end, those kind of emails just started to become noise. Um, and I think there's a limit how long we can talk about flattening the curve. Um, brands should be a force in helping adapt to different ways of living and working. Um, and organisations are all looking for a way forward and seeking the positive things in life. Um, hence, it's important that brands can adapt and move forward from COVID. Um, we seem to be coming out of this in some sort of way. So um, I think we need to be looking forward now as opposed to be looking back. So do you think that this period of time, as we are now hopefully, you know, moving towards the next stage of this crisis, is this a time where you might think about um, developing your, your brand message or your tone or is, is this a real time of reflection? Definitely. I, I think um, this is really valuable time whereby um, you should be looking at your brand, what it's saying how hard it's working for you um, and how it's reflects out to your audience. Um, as I said, it's, it's, it's your whole um, wrath of communication the way you're communicating with the audience. Um, and we should all be using this precious time now to be looking at those tools. What could your starting point be for, for that? I think the starting point is to actually um, look at the weaknesses in your brand, look at your brand messaging, look at everything and just see if it's flexible um, for your organizational brand to move forward. So a bit of a critical analysis of, of where you are at the moment. Definitely, definitely. Um, I think it's crucial at the moment. So in what ways can the internal management of a business reflect their brand? It's, I think it's a bit like a headmaster of a school, really. Um, the personality of a head reflects downwards throughout a school. Um, different internal management structures have different effects on a company's brand. Um, that brand and company culture filters down through an organisation and it comes out in a positive or negative form. Um, I think brands can be stifled through company culture. Um, and if brands are stifled, um, you know, the company vision cannot move forward and values um, aren't allowed to be nurtured and respected throughout an organisation. So I think it's... it's 
yeah, the, uh, the management structure does have an impact on brands. And presumably, as, as so many workers now look towards moving, going back to the workplace, that's something that's more important than ever. Definitely, yes. Um, I, I think this is where uh, brands and companies need to reevaluate their culture. Um, there's a big insecurity now. People going back to work, people are worried about their jobs, people are worried about uh, performance of brands and companies. Um, so it's a very difficult climate and people need to believe even more in their company and their brands. Um, and equally that is outward facing to their audiences as well. Because obviously all of our listeners here are, are, are keen to finish our webinar and, and act on all of these great pointers that you've, you've given already. What are the key three pointers that people can do to really care for their brands right now? <clears throat> three pointers. Um, I would think the first thing is that every brand needs a health check. Bit of an MOT, a bit, an evaluation of what your brand stands for. Is it still relevant? Um, can it flex? Um, can it adapt to you know, changing global circumstances. Um, if your brand is tired, it needs to polish, you need to fall in love with it again. So equally your audience can fall in love with your brand. I think if your brand is tired and it's not given the right messages, then equally that's gonna affect your audience and further on down the sales. Um, I think you should be looking at a short recovery plan. Um, every business owner um, should be looking at brands to see what their brand is actually doing for them at the moment. Um, and, and also um, just look at ways of actually nurturing your brand, making it fail proof for the future really. And I think that, that really leads on to my, to my next question, which is what future challenges will business owners need to address regarding their branding? I think it's going to be increasingly important that brands can stand out in their space. Um, brands, companies need to be pioneers of their craft. They need to keep audiences engaged in order to build customer confidence. Um, they not only need to survive, but they need to flourish in what is going to be a new era of business. Um, business will never be quite the same after this. And that means that your brand cannot stand still. So brands, your brand does need to move with the change in times really. Um, so your, your brand does need to be fresh in order to move forward and keep fresh. And, and is, is that way that you would, you would freshen that by through that sort of critical analysis of what you're already doing? Yeah, I, I think um, you, you would, and whether you need help to do this, to actually look at your brand, um, gauge what it's doing for the company, um, look at all your communications, um, are they um, telling the right story? Are they um, engaging with audiences in the right way? Are they acting differently for you? Is your brand um, working as hard, as hard as your competitor, for instance? This is all about standout and making brands stronger in a, in a really complex, busy world. Um, so stand out is really important. Um, you need to be saying and doing something a bit different. Presumably with that idea of co competition, there will be brands that were really quite successful within their sector that the impact of this period of time will actually have changed their, the position of their brand against some of their competitors. Definitely, yeah. And, and there will be that 
brands that actually become stronger through this because they are doing things differently and they found a different way of communicating with an audience. Um, they've engaged an audience differently. So brands cannot be uh, navigating this market in the same way as they're used to, I don't think. Um, and it's gonna, gonna be increasingly difficult for brands moving forward. So perhaps one of the don'ts in this conversation for, for brands is, is don't be complacent. Don't be complacent. Um, your brand cannot stand still. Um, it needs to move. It needs to constantly move. Um, you need to constantly be aware of um, what it's doing for your sales um, and how your audience are reacting to your, to your brand. So, um, yeah, there's no room for complacency, unfortunately. Well, I think with, with that fantastic um, list of, of, of actions that people can go away and do, I don't think any of our listeners are at risk of um, being, <laughs> complacent, being complacent now. So that was really fantastic, Steve. Thank you so much for right. um, being here today. So it just leaves me to tell everybody just a little bit about next week's webinar which will be uh, next Wednesday on the 20th of May at 3 p.m. And we'll, I will be speaking with Bertie Van Wick from Herman Miller, who will be telling us a great deal of information about working from home. So um, please do follow BCFA forward slash Design Insider on LinkedIn, where we will be very shortly um, publishing a registration link for uh, Bertie's talk. Um, I hope that everybody really takes care this coming week. And I would like again to thank you, Steve, for such a fantastic uh, Q&A. Pleasure, pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, all of Steve's uh, contact information will just follow on a slide ever so shortly. So just hang on one second for that and you'll be able to get in touch. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.